Hi, my name is Ryan Langwish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to handle hidden information in Tabletop Simulator. So with certain physical games, there may be times where they come with like a player shield or something that's meant to hide things from other players around the table, whether that's victory points or just other things that other players aren't intended to see. And as you can imagine in Tabletop Simulator, that might be a little challenging as every player is able to move their camera around and see kind of whatever they would like. Um, however, Tabletop Simulator provides us with some tools to kind of implement um, similar functionality. And um, I'm going to go over a few of the different ways that you might be able to achieve that in your prototypes. So um, I'm first going to throw in a deck of cards here, just a standard deck. Um, so we have that for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to go over here on this left menu to the zone tool, which is going to have a few options here. We're only going to talk about a couple of them. Um, but the first one here is hidden, a hidden zone. So if I click this tool, this allows me to drag um, basically a, you know, rectangular shape that's going to define that hidden zone. And you'll notice that it's in the color that I currently have selected. So because I'm, I'm the white player right now, um, I've defined now a hidden zone for white. And what that means is when I take components like these cards and I put them in this zone, I can still see them because I'm the white player and this is a white zone. However, if I would switch to a different color, like red for example, and actually you can already see that now everything inside of that zone is hidden from me. I can't see it. So this is the simplest way to implement something like a, like a player shield because um, you can just, each player has a zone that's defined in their own color and they can put whatever components they need to inside of that zone. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind with these is that they're going to be visible during play. So while I, you know, we're playing the game, you're going to see this big cube here, right? Um, and that may or may not be desirable depending on kind of what you're, what you're going for, but it does kind of represent, you know, in real life you would have a player shield that everybody can see, and this is kind of accomplishing um, the same thing. So that may be all you need, to, depending on what you're trying to do. That might be enough to get you where you need to go. But let's look at some of the other options that come along with um, these. So if I go back into this tool here and I right-click it, I can see that I have options to change it to whatever color I want. So that's um, basically whatever color I set it to, that's the player that's going to be able to see inside of the hidden zone. But there's also a little settings button here that's going to bring up three additional options. Um, the first one here is hide pointers, and so that's going to be a little hard to demonstrate here with just um, me as the only player. But basically what that means is normally in Tabletop Simulator, you can see other players' cursors, their hands moving around, and that would be true even within a hidden zone. But it's possible for certain games that you might... Um, that might give away too much information. Like maybe the hidden zone is actually like uh, something that players are using to track secret information on. And if you could tell what part of the zone the cursor is on, that might give away information that you're not meaning to give away. So there is the option to, um, oops. So that's a good explanation of how to delete zones. If you just with the zone tool, left click um, the zone, that'll delete the zone. I want to right click it here. Um, so that's the hide pointers option. So if you if it's important that you players can't even tell where the cursor is within the zone, that's what you'd want to use. Reverse hiding is for instances where you want everybody but one player to see the components in the zone. So you just want to hide it um, from a single player. So if I do reverse hiding, now as the white player, I can't see what's here. But if I change colors, now I can. So any other player is able to see the components in here, um, except for the player um, whose color matches the zone. Um, so that can be useful if it's kind of that reverse instance where um, it's only one player that isn't supposed to be seeing the information. And this last option here is for determining whether this zone should be transparent, that you can see through it or not. 
I actually just spent some time playing with that, and it seems to be kind of finicky to me. <laughs> sometimes it seems to be changing it to be uh, transparent and not, and sometimes I click it and it doesn't make any difference. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how to explain that one based on the behavior I'm seeing right now, um, but that option is available. Perhaps I'm just not completely understanding how it works. Um, so those are the basic options you have for a hidden zone. Now I mentioned that left clicking the zone will um, get rid of it if I'm in the zone tool. Um, but suppose I wanted to move it around or adjust the size of it. If I wanted to do that, I would want to use this gizmo tool. So there's all these different options for gizmo. So for example, move. And this is actually going to show all the different things that I could interact with. These are actually the player hands that come by default. Um, but if I click onto this, we're going to see this dialog pop up that I could actually um, adjust like the position, rotation, and scale by actually entering in the numbers specifically. Otherwise, I could go and grab, um, you can see I can kind of highlight the different axes of this um, here. And if I grab one, it'll move it on that ax axis without while staying locked on the other two axes. Um, so that can be good for movement. There's a, um, a scale tool, so I could, same thing, grab one of those and scale it in that direction. Um, so it gives you some options to kind of dial in without like deleting and having to redraw um, with the tool. So if you want to do that, gizmo tool. Otherwise, you could just left click it to delete it and um, recreate it by dragging the box again. So that is a nice segue into talking a little bit about hands. So you'll notice that when I brought up that gizmo tool, we saw those hands displayed around the table. Um, and the other way I could see that is if I actually go to the hands tool here. So that's going to show me all the existing hands at the table. And so by default in Tabletop Simulator, it kind of has one for each color where they would be sitting at the table. And what this means is like, you know, as the white player here, I can draw cards and I can pull them into my hand here. Um, and that's not only going to, you know, kind of lock it into this zone um, in kind of a hover state, but it's also going to show it down at the bottom of my screen and I can kind of, while I'm looking at anything on the board, see what's currently in my hand, which is kind of a nice um, feature of Tabletop Simulator. Um, but hands are actually just a, another variety of hidden zones. And so if we go into the actual hands tool here, we can see these and we could left click to delete them if we wanted to, but we can also draw additional hands if we wanted to. So suppose I drew, did this. So now I can stick cards into this hand and it's going to kind of hover them. Um, and it operates much like a hidden zone in that if I was red or any other color, I would be able to tell, hey, there's cards over here, but I don't know what they are. They now just show kind of a mystery um, image. Now, it's a little interesting if you have multiple hands defined for the same player, you'll notice I'm only seeing the nine of clubs in my hand right now, even though there's also this hand over here. Basically, whatever is the oldest defined hand for that player is going to be what's their kind of primary hand that's actually shown here for them. Um, and for any other purposes that would like reference their hand, like dealing, for example. So if I right click the deck and I deal to white, that's going to deal to this hand as opposed to this one because um, it's the first one that's defined. However, if I went into this tool here and I deleted this by clicking it, and these just fall to the table. Now you'll notice I see the, the ones that are in this one because this is now the oldest defined hand for white. And if I deal, it's going to uh, go to that hand now. Um, so it's just useful things to know. I've seen some mods that have actually defined um, kind of multiple rows of hands for a player, which can be useful for kind of organizing your hand. Like if it's a game where you have a lot of cards and you're trying to remember kind of which ones you're using for certain things, um, it can be kind of nice to be able to just pull them into different rows and kind of organize them that way. So you can kind of use it as just an organizational thing um, to help with play. But it's important to know that only that oldest hand is going to be what shows here at the bottom um, and is considered the primary hand.
This probably is most of what you need to do most hid like hidden information that you need in games. But I wanted to just touch on a little bit of what you might be able to do if you start getting into some of the scripting functionality. Um, so suppose, you know, you like the idea of having a hidden zone on the table like this one, but you don't like that it shows this big transparent box there, right? That's kind of like if it was a hidden zone on the board somewhere, that would be kind of annoying to, you know, have that kind of blocking the illustrations on the board. Now, granted, in a physical game, it's not likely you're going to have an instance where something's going to be hidden on the board because how would you really accomplish that? Um, but Tabletop Simulator is more powerful than that, right? We're not limited necessarily to what you could do in the physical realm. So I'm just going to do a quick example of kind of a kind of scripting hack for getting around that to basically implement a hidden zone without it actually showing. So something that's cool is besides these zones, the last option here is what Tabletop Simulator calls a scripting zone. So in this behaves in the same way in that I can drag a zone. But this zone currently does absolutely nothing. It's just defining the area, and it's relying on me to now use the scripting functionality to tell Tabletop Simulator what, what to do with this. Um, and so, if you're not familiar with kind of the, the scripting in Tabletop Simulator, this is something that makes it extremely powerful, is some of the modding tools, that it lets you, um, you know, write custom code and things that, that affect the mod. And if I go to this scripting tab here, now depending on how much exposure you've had to any programming, this is either going to look, some of this is going to look very familiar or going to look very foreign to you. But basically, this is code that I can add to um, to do different things in the game. And there's some kind of predefined functions here of on load, so I could put some code here that I want to execute when the game is loaded, or on update that gets called once per frame, so if I wanted something to constantly be checking. However, Tabletop Simulator defines a lot of other different hooks and events and things that you can um, work with to get to do, um, just add other functionality. So in this case, the functionality I'm interested in adding is I want this scripting zone whenever something gets put into it, I want to hide it from, let's say, the red player, but have it visible to the white player without it actually showing the, the hidden zone. Because you'll notice when I go to another tool, the scripting zone is not shown like the other zone is. So it'll actually be invisible during play. So how I'm going to do that is I am going to go back into scripting. And I'm going to add a new function. And this is a built-in function that's called onObjectEnterScriptingZone. And this function gives you two things. It gives you a zone, and it gives you an object. So basically, the way to think of this is this: every time any object enters any scripting zone that you have defined, this is going to fire. And it's going to give you what zone it was that triggered it and what object it was. And now it's a wide, wide open for you to do whatever you want to do with that information. So in this case, we want to check, well, was it that specific zone? So I can actually, if I go back to the scripting thing here, if I right click this, it'll actually say this ID was copied to the clipboard. So that's the specific universal ID for this scripting zone. So if I go back to my scripting, I basically want to check was the zone that got triggered that specific zone. And so the way I can do this, I can say if zone.getGUID, so that's going to get the universal ID for the zone that was triggered. If that's equal to the ID of our zone, which I just got by right clicking it, then we want to do you know, certain things. So this means that we pulled something into that specific zone. And in this case, we basically want to make it that the red player can't see it anymore. And so on the object, there's actually a function to set it invisible for certain players. And that is set invisible to. And this is going to take um, basically a list of colors that I want it to be invisible to. And in this case, I'm going to say red. 
And again, all of this like syntax of how, um, you know, what you pass to certain functions, there's a whole API documentation reference for these things. Um, but I'm just kind of going through, going through the example of how you would do this specific thing. And I could, you know, right now I'm just doing it for hiding from red. If I wanted to hide from multiple players, I would just pass in a list here um, of players that I want it to be invisible for. Now that's part of the, the, the puzzle in that I want it to, whenever it enters it, I want to set it so it's invisible for those pl other players. But I also want it that when it leaves the zone, it needs to become visible again. Otherwise, it's just going to permanently be invisible. So there's actually, and I'm going to copy this whole function. And so I, the other function that I'm going to want to use is on enter leave or on object leave scripting zone. So similar to this one, this is going to trigger whenever an object leaves a zone and it's going to tell me what zone and what object that was. Same thing, we're going to want to check that it was the specific zone that we're working with. And then we want to set that object to be visible for all players again now that it's out of that zone. So I'm just going to set this to be an empty list. So now every time an object enters that zone, it should hide it for red, yellow, and blue, and whenever it leaves the zone, it should set it invisible for nobody. So it, everybody should be able to see it again. So if we hit save and play here, it'll reload, and let's see if this worked. So if I zoom out here, and let's remind ourselves where we stuck that zone. So this is our hidden zone here. Right now, I'm the white player, meaning I should be able to see it at all times, because I'm never setting it invisible um, for white. However, if I change to be red, and then I drag this in here, it disappears. Magic. And when I pull it back out, it appears again. So basically, all that's happening is when, I, when it goes in, it triggers that first function that's setting it invisible for red as well as yellow and blue right now, all the other players. Um, and then when it leaves, it sets it invisible to nobody, and now everybody can see it again. So this is kind of a way you can get around, um, basically get the functionality of a hidden zone without um, having it show up on the table, which maybe is desirable for you. I thought it was worth adding into this video as a little fun example, maybe a little introduce, introduction to scripting if you haven't seen some of that in Tabletop Simulator. Um, and I hope to go over some of that and maybe some of those more advanced features in some f future videos. But hopefully this video was helpful um, in kind of getting an idea of what you have to work with with trying to do hidden information. Um, I would love to hear any other ideas you have of things you'd like to see in Tabletop Simulator. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.